so I think we can start. Hello everyone, welcome to this webinar. My name is Arturo Patiño from the Young America's Business Trust. Uh, today I'm glad to introduce the speaker of this presentation. His name is uh, Mr. Maximiliano Campos, Senior Chief for the Integrated Water Resources Management Division at the Organization of American States. During his presentation, Mr. Campos will go over current critical points regarding the water as a non-renewable resource, addressing access to clean and drinking water and its efficient usage. Before getting started, I would like to tell the audience that your questions are welcome. At the end of this presentation, there will be a section of questions and answers in which you will be able to share your comments and doubts. Without nothing left to say, I give the floor to Maximiliano Campos. Hello, sir. Welcome to uh, the webinar, and thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much, Arturo, and I really appreciate the invitation uh, on my behalf and, and also on my team working on water resources here at OAS. Uh, today's um, presentation is going to be uh, addressing important things regarding water, the access of clean water for secure consumption and the, the efficient use for for a, for a sector like agriculture which is the, the highest demander of water in, in the world. So we are going to try to, to reach a point in which we could have some conclusions on, on those two topics and of course that the idea is to have a great knowledge around the water management, integrated water resources management, water governance, and several other concepts that uh, would lead us to these uh, specifics that we are uh, trying to to address in particular here. And I don't know uh, if we could have, uh, at least for me to have an idea, uh, we have some people on, online and if Arturo you could uh, give me a, a, an idea of some of the background of the people who are we speaking to, just to me to see how deeply or, or, or less deeply we should go into the conference. A any ideas? Yes, we have uh, some participants uh, who want to participate in the Eco Challenge uh, category uh, in the Thick Americas uh, competition. Mm -hmm. And they are from uh, basically United yeah. States, Caribbean? Yeah, from, the, from different uh, part of the Americas. Okay, all right, okay. So anyhow, let's start and as Arturo said, we are going to have uh, an space for, uh, you know, for trying to take some questions, some comments on, from your sites, some specifics that I will try to to help a little bit. If not, at least I will take notes, so I will come back to you by email or by any other means, so we could try to address the specifics of, of that. So uh, let's start just with this picture, which is a little bit of the, uh, the ex experiences that we have on water resources for the Americas. This is going to be a kind of a Spanish type of session, but I know that we, in the universal language of science, uh, we could go through very easily. There are some slides in English or some other in Spanish, but this is like a 96 slides, so uh, I'm not going to go through all of them, because the idea is for you to have the full presentation and in case that you have a specific question, some other topics that probably we are not going to address, I'm going to address here, but at least for you to have the, the notes so you could approach me in some other time if you wish. So the first thing uh, is to, that we are going to build this conference based on the experiences that we have here at the organization from, Ameri from American States, which is a 50 year, five decades of, of working on, on water resources management. In, in in the in the in the Americas, okay. So uh, let's see. We could jump to the next one. Okay. So we are going to talk about three, four, five things, more or less. Okay. We are going to talk about the the challenges, the challenges that we face uh, in our area of water resources, which are global and which are local challenges. So let's talk. We are going to talk about the the water resources from the point of view of supply and demand of water. We're going to put some examples of Central America, which, has the, which are the ones that I have uh, more elaborated over here, but could be, you know, we could build examples for South America, for Caribbean, for the United States, or Mexico, or Canada, because more or less they follow the same, the same methodology. One important thing that we are going to talk about in order to understand what is the agriculture and the water consumption uh, uh, standing for in this, uh, 
in this issue of, of water resources in, in the Americas is what is called the governance of water, which is nowadays the, 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 the more important issue regarding uh, water in the, in the Americas and of course integrated water resources management, which uh, probably many of you know that this is the, one of the main tools for, um, for promoting development using water resources as, a, as an element. We could uh, share some of the experiences that also we have at the at the OES. We could talk about the experience at the Bermejo between Argentina and Bolivia. We talk about the experience at the Trifini region, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras. We could talk at the experience at the Bravo River, which is between the U.S. and and and, and Mexico. We could talk about Cuenca del Plata, Aquifero Guarani. Some of the these experiences that we have been putting together along the, these 50 years of working with the member states. Then also we could talk about some um, uh, new issues regarding water, which are also very important and in which I think that the the participation of, of, of young uh, uh, entrepreneurships would be would be great. For example, all these issues related with the extracting um, sector regarding mining, um, pollution, mercury pollution in water, the problem with sanitation and potable water in many of the people of the regions or countries which has uh, a strong ex extractive industries, the competing of use, water and commerce, all these issues are very important and require a lot of new uh, um, ideas, especially from young people, to try to, to, to face the challenges. So these are, are, are going to be some of the elements that we are going to discuss. And at the end, I hope that we could conclude something for the specifics of, of the access to water and the efficient use, especially for agriculture, okay? So um, the next uh, slide uh, is related to the, ch the, the, the challenges themselves. Let me close, let's see if I close this. Uh, Arturo, just one question. Uh, in my screen, are you seeing the the no uh, no Max you're, you're the only one can uh, who can see it uh, yes no what I mean is that you see the the go to meeting uh, uh, piece no 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 all oh, right okay so let me just try to close it over here so we could just it don't get into my way so now back to the point so you can you hear me well everything yes. Yes, okay. We, okay, okay. So the, the first thing that we are going to address here are what are the challenges? Where water stands in this planet uh, and specifically in this hemisphere, okay? And the first thing that we have to say is that in this new century we face in the first 10, 15 years several simultaneous challenges that we in some way uh, framework them in the, in the concept of uh, global changes. Why? Because we have the effects of, for example, the crisis in energy that it was all around the news, the financial crisis that affect many countries, especially developed countries like the United States and so on, the human uh, crisis not only in the Americas but also in Africa and many other regions, and a lot of this is associated to water, the climate crisis, well we are a couple of weeks or one week uh, close to the to the COP in Paris in which we are going to take important decisions related to climate. And in this particular, I want you to, to put a lot of attention because water is so climate dependent that everything that happened at the COP is going to have an effect on water. And also the issue of, of food, and this is where we start touching base with the specifics of the efficiency use of water for the agriculture. There was a crisis of, 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 of um, on food security in, in the world and in the Americas and so on. So and also the crisis on water that is in some way associated to water governance for the Americas. So that's that's some of the things that we call the global the global challenges. Okay. So let's see if we could jump to the next one. Okay, so One important thing is that we have to understand what is the scenario that we are facing in this planet in which water is, is cross-cut all, all this that we are going to say. The first thing that we have to imagine is that uh, how are we going to be in the next 15 years? 
<clears throat> the first thing that, that, that determines the, the use and manage of water is the economy, the global economy in some way. And this global economy is projected to grow almost a 50% in the next 50 years, in which more than 1,000 million of persons are going to move toward the cities, especially in Latin America, which is becoming a more urbanized uh, region uh, for the world. Uh, in that city, this is where we produce uh, more or less 80% of, of all productivity is taking place at, at the cities. And so they are uh, very intense and consuming a lot of the, the energy from the planet. 70% of the energy of the planet takes uh, place in the cities. So this is a huge amount of greenhouse gases. 70% of the gases, the greenhouse gases that are being thrown to the planet as its origin of the cities. So it is important that in a planet in which is becoming more and more people are moving toward the cities and associated to this productivity, to the energy sector, to the transportation, we are going to have more greenhouse gases. And you will see how this is related to water and what you could plan for agriculture and access to, to water, to portable water too. Um, 2,500 millions of persons are going to reach the bid class. And so what it means? It means that we are going to increase our patterns of unsustainable, unsustainability. We are going to increase the pressure on, on, on national resources. We are going to increase the potential of conflictivity associated with those resources, especially water, that happens to be on the borders not only the superficial water that normally divide one country from the other, but also the aquifers that exist below this, this border. So that's important thing to, to know and understand. So we could summarize this. The excessive consumption of national resources that affect the ecosystems. There are millions who live without access of water and electricity. There are a lot of pressure of, from on, on human uh, uh, human beings and, and the ecosystem is is increasing uh, very rapidly. The governments and society cannot catch up with the damages that are already caused by natural disasters. Eighty percent of them associated to water, and then the increase on the pressure on the on the government system because everybody is asking the governments to react to something that, as a matter of fact, is society as as a whole that has to respond. So then, in order to, to try to face all these challenges and try to go to the specifics of water and agriculture and potable consumption, we have to understand that these global challenges are, 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 um, has a piece of local challenges too. And the best example of this is global warming, that, which is a clear example of local and global interaction. And you'd see, what Global warming, climate change has to do with water. Well, it has to do with everything, and with water especially. When you talk about mitigation of greenhouse gases, you are talking about energy. And a lot of these sources of energy are associated to water. When you talk adaptation to climate change, you are definitely talking about water. So it is important through this example to understand the teleconnection that exists between global and local challenges with the specifics. Through this example of, of global warming, it could be one. And we, were, we are going to go in more detail around this. One of the main factors that affect the possibility for have more a, a better uses of, of water is this factor, is the, the population of the planet. The population is, a, is a, a, what I call a fundamental determinant. And this is something that not too many people want to talk about, but it is right there. The more people we have, the more demand for water we are going to have. This is straightforward. So there is no big deal on that. And the population is increasing. It's increasing at a level uh, such that could create some or, or more competing uses for water. But for the case of the Americas, what is important here is to see this. The Americas in some way, as a whole, not only North America and South America, I hope that you can see the arrow, uh, we have a positive balance regarding the amount of people that we have and the water resources that we have. The America as a continent has almost half of the water of the world. So it is a rich region. So this is why many 
important things of what happened in the Americas. Not all, for example, you can compare this with Europe, in which they have more population than water, in other areas like Asia or Africa, in which they have more population than water. So their demand is huge based on the resources, the water resources that they do have. Our extraction is, is large, but not enough for overcome what the availability of water that we have. But this is a plus, but you will see later that sometimes it is a minus. This is a, an interesting example because when you consider what are the possibilities for being efficient regarding water for agriculture and food productivity or for accessing clean water for human consumption, you have to understand what are you competing with regarding the uses of water. And this is a new, uh, in the last three, four years, this new concept has uh, been on, on the spot internationally, what is called the nexus between water and energy. And it is based on the hypothesis that the increase in population, for example, in the 2035, we are going to be 8 millions, not 7, 8 millions. For 2050, we could be close to 9 millions. So it means that if the consumption patterns associated to population growth and consumption itself are maintained like the ones that we have right now, what is called the business as usual scenario, for the year 20, 2035, the energy consumption would increase in 35%, which translated into water, it means that we need to increase water consumptions by 85% for responding to this energy sector. So increases in pressure on finite water resources. That's the conclusion. And that's very important because if you are you are having more people in this America's continent uh, that you have to produce more food, so you are going to compete with a sector which is very strong and very powerful and, and is producing goods and with other sectors too, but that's a, that's a statistics is, is it put you in the in the real context. If you go for the specifics for Latin America, if you take the electricity generation for 2050, it's going to grow very fast from 2012 to 2015. It may grow in 550 percent in order to catch up with the demands, especially the, we are talking about hydropower, which means that for the water sector, we need to increase the 360%, more or less, the water used by the power sector, okay? So you see here, there is a strong determinant for what we wanted to do and why innovation is so important for other sectors others than energy in that case. So that's, a, that's, a, that's an important factor. No, let's, uh, let's uh, take some facts into account. One thing is that, uh, uh, as I just mentioned to you, uh, the, the Americas is, is, and when we talk America, we're not talking about the United States. That's a, that's a very important clarification that I have to make. America is the continent. So we are, going, we are talking about North America, Central America, Caribbean, and South America. So when we talk the Americas, it's at the end, it's this whole hemisphere. So America is one of the regions with more water in the planet, with more than 25 uh, cubic kilometers per year, an extraction of only 3%, more or less, associated to domestic use, industrial, and agriculture, agricultural sector mainly. Only the Caribbean account for one third of the renewable resources of the world associated to water. Even though it is a small territory with only 15% of, of, of land and 8.4% of, of the population of the world, receive almost one third of the precipitations of the world. And this is an important factor that the second time that I'm going to make this statement, water and climate go hand by hand. So the amount of precipitation that is received depends a lot of, on, the, on the water. This is a, a pie chart that shows you a little bit how water is distributed in the rest of the world. So this is just to take a look at on how countries like Japan with 1% of the water, Central Africa, Southeast Africa, North Africa, South Asia, etc. These are very, regions with a lot of limitation regarding, regarding water. South America and North America, and when we add them together, it's almost 45%, almost half of the water of the world happens to be in this region of the Americas, okay? But there is a, there is a, there are some things that needs to be uh, taken into consideration when we talk about this great water capital that we have. One of the things is that the water distribution in the American continent is not 
homogeneous. It's very uh, um, heterogeneous in some way. And it is subject to a lot of uh, pressures, as I mentioned before, with the, when we talk about the challenges associated with extractions from agriculture, mining, also associated to the great deal of deforestation that is taking place in the Americas, in many of our basins, which uh, has uh, an impact, impor an important impact on the possibility for the basins to, to capture all this moisture and water and, and to recharge our aquifers. And this is something, this is, this is an important factor to take into account um, at the time of planning. Another important thing that we have in the America, and we are very well advanced in that regard, is that we have been studied a lot of the transboundary resources that we have, especially the aquifers. We happen to have 74 aquifers in the continent in our borders, which is, is, is very important from the point of view of our reserve for the future. But now that the pollution is, is, is so uh, exponentially growing in the Americas, may, a lot of this Water from the from the transboundary basins has been uh, is uh, are in use. Uh, some countries like the Plata Basin countries have been uh, working in some kind of international agreements in order to protect uh, um, and make sustainable use of this water. And this is this is also a, an important an important factor to take into account. The water from the aquifers is 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 fundamental for the future. 